Over 70% of the businesses started during the COVID times have their entire marketing budget in digital space, which makes it increasingly important to track the large chunks of data. If you're not a professional or have never worked with marketing analytics, you might be thinking about how effectiveness is evaluated, where marketing data originates from, and why it needs to be analyzed. Now, this is where the marketing analytics enters the picture. Marketing analytics refers to technologies that are used to create, execute, and analyze marketing campaigns across all media. This course will bring an insight into the brand value and various models that help analyze the marketing efforts. The goal of marketing analytics is to improve companies' return on investment from its marketing initiative. So stay tuned and learn all that you can about the same. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new update or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing. So make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video for any query or suggestions and I will respond to your comments. Now, with a lot of companies that have come up during the COVID time and the post-COVID time, most of them have their marketing budget revolved around data. Now, data and digital channels like Google, Bing, Facebook, Instagram, all these stuff includes it massive amounts of data that is generated by the users. In order to track all these data, the big brands, the big companies want to analyze your data so that they can make some very sound business decisions and make sure that their product is being sold to consumers like you and me now let's in this particular session let's learn about what exactly is marketing analytics how different companies analyze data that is being drawn from the customers also let's look at what are the challenges that are faced by these companies in marketing analytics furthermore let's discuss about the various models that marketing analytics includes the various tips and tricks that the companies use in order to drive the customer behavior to know about the customer behavior then let's talk about two major things one is the brand value the second one is customer lifetime value now let's look at how it is calculated what exactly is it all that we will be learning in this particular session then at the end we have marketing analytics jobs now for you to become an expert marketer to become a marketing analyst you need to know what type of jobs that are available for you what are types of packages that are available for you also you'll be knowing about how the companies are expanding their marketing budget onto the digital channels and how important does a role of a marketing analyst become in this domain. It is going to be a knowledge pack session, so make sure you have your notes ready. Let's start. Let's start with the first module that is introduction to marketing. Now, in the most literal sense, if we say that marketing is basically promoting a particular product or a service. Now, what is this product and what is this service? It's basically the company that you stand for, the products and the services that they are rolling out. If it is in different sectors, if it is a financial company, then you have various financial models or something like that. If you're a product company, if you are more fast moving consumer goods company, you have products like toothpaste, brush, uh, detergents and all this stuff. So different sectors have different companies and different companies have different marketing strategies so marketing is basically about promoting that particular product or a service that the company wants to sell so it is basically about understanding the clients creating and maintaining the relationship with them you want that particular customer to stay with you for a very long time right so for that case we use marketing now, just imagine that if you have your own company and if you want to sell a particular product, you can't tell a particular consumer or a customer, hey, listen, this is my product, buy it. That would simply not work because humans have a very interactive way of knowing things, of getting attracted to a particular product or a service. So if it would be something like, hey, this particular product will make your life easier than what it is now then the customer might be little more excited to listen to your particular product. So he'll gain more attention, more knowledge about what the product you are trying to sell. So that is all about marketing. It is about knowing your customers, knowing your consumer base, doing the particular market research about how your product will establish itself in the market. 
So marketing is is the activity as rightly mentioned collection of institutions and procedures for developing conveying delivering and exchanging value added offerings okay you need to add value to that customer's life that is why the com company is standing in first place clients partners society as a whole so we need to add certain value to the life of the clients the customers the partners and society as a whole now let's try to understand what are the various components of marketing starting with knowing the components of marketing the first one is communication now communication plays an integral part in knowing how well the customer presumes a brand to be like the communication between the brand and the customer should be extremely fluid it should tell a compelling story so that the customer gets engaged with and attracted towards that particular brand then comes the brand voice brand voice is basically telling what the personality of the brand looks like is the brand is more premium does the does the customer feels more value does he feels better to have to own that particular brand for example apple when you own an apple it's more of a status symbol it's knowing to have the best technology in hand right so that is what the brand voice is it tells about the personality of that particular brand then comes the pricing now as a company you would want your pricing to be appropriate as the customer wants it it should not neither be too high for the customer to afford or neither too low so that they feel that the brand is undervalued or is a cheap brand so pricing plays an integral part you need also need to do a lot of market research to know what type of pricing you need to set you may have observed uh, certain times that if a product is selling for 500 rupees instead of writing that particular amount as 500 they would put it as 499 that tells mostly about how humans perceive a particular thing they are more visual towards that thing so they would see that 499 and they would think it's around 400 right instead it is a 500 so knowing how to set the pricing is also an art it is a way of you market your particular product then comes market research now if your brand is expanding to a new continent to a new country you would want to know what are the basic set principles of that local area in that in which the brand is focusing on so that plays an important role to know what the market is to do to do your basic research about that particular place what are the payments like for example if the particular area in which your company is going is more accessible to cash on deliveries is more it does not include much of credit cards or debit cards so you would set a pattern towards it you need to do your market research how the customer in that particular area want that particular thing to be like you need to blend your brand towards the way the customer wants remember customer is the center piece is a center stage of every brand then comes customer psychology humans are more perceived to be playing in the subconscious mind you need to attract the customer not by not just by saying it on their face like buy a particular product you need to tell them why do you need it you need to give them a subtle storyline you need to give them a certain way that to be in the particular customer's shoes to know how the brand is doing so that is customer psychology then comes effectiveness as mentioned before the communication between the brand and the customer should be fluid it should be more effective in conveying the message that the brand wants for the customer to look at so that is how effective they are building their strategies how effectively they are communicating from the brand's perspective to the customer's perspective then comes campaigns now marketing campaigns play an essential part in grabbing the attention of the audience let's just take an example these days the cred ad of rahul dravid is on a hype everyone knows about it what did they do what did cred as a brand do with that ad so rahul dravid is presu presumed to be a more calm person more patient person in circumstances but in that particular ad cred wanted the world to see the anger side of rahul dravid the angry rahul dravid so they made that particular ad so that the customers grab attention to the thing which is not normal which is unusual so grabbing attention plays a very important role in these marketing campaigns another ad would be the five star ad kabhi kuch na karke dekho it means doing nothing by eating five star so that is a very unusual ad depicting various stories of offices of some accident something like that is showcased in the ads that are portrayed by five star just to grab attention right so such marketing campaigns are essentially important 
to grab attention of the audience so that the audience know what brand is it right the rahul dravid ad they did not made wanted to make certain assumptions about something they wanted cred as a company to be known by a vast audience which they successfully did so these marketing campaigns play an essential part in brand's voice in the customer's perception to that particular brand the next part that comes up is what is digital marketing in order to know no digital marketing let me explain you what used to be traditional methods now if you would go back around 20 years in time you would know that the methods were quite different we had traditional methods of marketing what would that include that included commercial tv ads that we used to watch between the tv series between the tv shows between the news shows so that used to air for around 10 to 15 seconds or maybe a minute so those were the commercial tv ads that used to run in between matches also if you were a cricket geek you would know between overs you have a commercial set that used to play right so these are the commercial tv ads then comes billboards now if you're traveling on a highway you would have known that big billboards are there in in order to provide you an information about a particular brand or a service then comes is newspaper ads if you were would have opened a physical newspaper you would have known there are certain columns used to come right so each one of them advertising about something or the other maybe a government thing maybe a public tender maybe some different types of services that they are providing maybe a coaching institute is providing a particular stuff so all that used to come in newspaper ads then again one of the most important things of traditional marketing were pamphlets that used to run around between the newspapers if you would open a newspaper you would find a a pamphlet that used to roam around in the house around the city maybe uh, in the front of windscreen of a car you would see that pamphlet right about branding about telling the customer what they are providing if there are special service if there is a new restaurant or a new shop that is opening in the city so these all were the traditional methods of marketing but now the times have changed now the world has shrunk into a global village everything is digitized so in that particular scenario what is the way in which you market that is digital methods like social media platforms you have search engine channels you have different stuff that goes around right so digital marketing often known as online marketing is a promotion of brands through internet and other kinds of digital channels in order to engage with the potential customers now what used to happen in traditional methods is that you would have a wider customer base right but as a brand you could not know if your particular branding is reaching to the target audience or not while in case of digital marketing you would exactly know which customer is receiving what type of content from your brand right which is more customizable which is more trackable on paper so you would know what are the customer preferences what the customer needs what at what time do they need a particular pro- product or a service so these are the new methods the new ways in which you market a particular product Google and Bing search engines you had Facebook Instagram you have video platforms that is YouTube right and also LinkedIn as a source to market yourself to build your personal brand to build the brand of your company all sort of things comes under digital marketing and just to give you a little stat on how this is increasing during the covid pandemic post covid pandemic around 70% of the businesses that started during that period had entire base digitally they had their products they had their services digitally all the marketing that used to happen were through digital platforms so this is the scope of which marketing is going ahead in the coming future it has a lot of growth potential and you as a digital marketer can also engage in this particular stuff you can be a part of it you can grow your business forward to an exponential level now let's try to understand the ma- management of marketing strategies through a board member or a member of the management perspective of a brand now it involves the first step is engaging and understanding the desires of the target audience of the potential customers from the product quality to the product packaging right right from the scratch of starting that particular product to the end quality everything should be perfect second is analyzing the current market position now as a brand you need to be very aware about how your brand is at what position it is 
what is the position with respect to its rivals with it, respect to its competitors and then develop goals of what they want how much market dominance how much percentage of market dominance is required by that particular brand to grow forward so that strategies is what the marketing management looks at how to develop certain goals for upcoming future then comes developing innovative marketing campaigns to set out brand messaging now innovating mar marketing campaigns as i have already discussed before is about creating the brand awareness to the level in which every person who comes across knows the name of that brand to grab their attention towards that particular brand so that is innovative marketing campaigns then comes use of competitive digital space now what is this digital space it can be youtube it can be facebook instagram different marketing channels that are currently available in the digital space so to extract the best out of it you would have seen some cheeky tweets by these companies during certain events certain political events certain geographical events they come up with a sense of humor to attract the customers to grab their attention then comes analyzing the strength and weakness of the company doing the swot analysis the strength weakness opportunities and threats of the company you would want to know how your marketing strategies are working or not so all these things comes under marketing management that is decided by the board of directors by the top management of the company now let's try to understand where does marketing analytics fit in this marketing ecosystem in this whole marketing architecture where does exactly marketing analytics fit in now let's try to understand from a very general perspective from a very layman's perspective what is the purpose of marketing now for every brand or every business entity that is out there the most important aspect is to generate sales that is what keeps their money flowing what that is what keeps its revenue flowing now in order to achieve that sales they need to build some marketing campaigns build some marketing efforts that could lead to the generation of sales now how is that possible you cannot just go out and just ask anyone to buy their product that would not happen right that would not be feasible now as we learned we have either two ways either the traditional methods like on commercial tv screens pamphlets in newspapers newspaper articles all these things can also help in their marketing efforts but the in this new age generation you have lot more different things that are going on you have social media channels you have channels like google bing you have social media platforms like facebook instagram linkedin twitter so you can make use of all these trends and all these upcoming new platforms to make sure your brand is ahead of its competition now the first step is to understanding what your consumer needs now in order to do that everyone today has phones right and every consumer in itself creates tremendous amounts of data now these companies utilize these types of data to make to understand the consumer behavior and to know what kind of preferences they have now let me give you a brief example let's say a company makes phones and the phone has different variants let's say 8 gb variant 12 gb variant different types of camera setups now now we need, as a brand we need to understand what does the customer really want what is the one thing of their brand portfolio of their product line what is the one thing that they utterly like right so when you understand this you can actually make all your processes more efficient you can disable all the ones that are not working for you all the products that are not working for you and you can focus your attention on the products that are really working for you so marketing efforts marketing analytics helps in such ways in which you can utilize that data is that is generated by the user by the customer and make your marketing decisions and also making sound business decisions so marketing analytics is, is the analysis of data collected through marketing efforts in order to find the trends as you rightly mentioned in things like how the campaigns will influence the conversions that would generate the leads to do the customer buying their product right you have regional preferences you have different preferences that also make its part then marketing analytics is a practice that aims to leverage these trends so you have certain trends that are going on for example if you have olympics uh, neeraj chopra won gold so you can make a marketing campaign that is revolved around that you can make general trends that are coming up you have various events that happen various troll events that happen various memes that come up so all these companies they make use of these cheeky lines cheeky statements that 
you know create their brand awareness and hence drive the brand value of that particular company so to improve these trends and discoveries they it enables to you know ensure that the future campaigns are worked on in the most efficient manner possible so all these things happen in this now now let's try to understand the importance of marketing analytics now marketing analytics enables the stakeholders to gain a very holistic perspective of all the marketing channels that are in play now marketing analytics softwares boost lead generations now what does this mean this means that they funnel those potential customers to become the actual customers of the company by giving them the data that is needed to optimize these campaigns that have been run if you you would have heard of uh, rahul dravid's cred campaign and all those campaigns right so they target they create brand awareness they generate the brand value and also target the more profitable customers more customers that are entitled to buy your product right so the customer behavior and preferences can be analyzed by using these marketing analytics now let's just say that you have a website and a lot of visitors are visiting those websites you may have seen that a lot of companies ask for enable the location right why do they do so they do so because they can actually give you customized emails customized messaging customized notifications regarding what type of ad that is suitable for your location let's just say if you are living in a metro city right so you have things that are more closer to you right and you can actually track where the customer actually wants which part of it it they wants what are they searching for right all these things can be enabled through live tracking like they they can real time track what is your behavior on their website what are the choices that the customer is entitled to and what do they really want in that particular uh, visiting that particular website so all these things they are they are very you know consciously analyzed and the companies take a lot of effort in noting down what the customer really wants you have also seen that some websites they ask for cookies right enable cookies accept the cookies what does that mean that means that apart from your website they can track what are your behaviors what are you searching for what are the various things that you are looking for on other websites you may have also seen that a lot of times that when you are uh, uh, searching something on any website let's say you are reading a newspaper you would have online when you are reading a newspaper online you may have seen that when you scroll through or any news article you scroll through you have certain ads and that ads are a behavior of what you searched beforehand if you are looking for a shoe there would be some brands that would be putting up their ads on the news articles external news articles that they publish right so they they are looking out for you on every perspective of your day that you are you are looking onto website you are looking onto instagram you would have customized ads that are pertaining only to you right this type of customization gives number one a sense of you know exclusiveness to the client to the customer it feels that the company is actually looking out for you which gen- which generates trust and as as in marketing world we know that trust happens a lot to do with what the marketing efforts are saying so all these things would lead to the increased sales generation which is the ultimate target of any any marketing activity now these analytics also helps in determining where the money of the company should go which channel is generating the most profit you can actually utilize that money in that particular domain let's say if facebook is generating most amount of revenue for the company in terms of marketing efforts so you will make sure that the majority of your budget is inclined towards facebook it's towards facebook to make sure more and more potential customer becomes the actual customers of the company which is why it is really important to critically note down what are the various streams of revenue that are coming from at which point so all these things have to be taken care of in marketing analytics now let's try to understand what are the various challenges that are faced by these marketing companies or the marketing department of a company in analyzing the data that we get there are certain challenges that the companies have to face let's look at what are them so the first one is data quality now with tremendous amount of data that is coming in we always have question in a marketing world that what type of data that is that coming in is it the type of d- data that we can use to optimize the ways that we are doing certain processes or are there some ways that we can more efficiently work towards so data quality is always a major concern from all the marketing firms out there so majorly what happens is that when you are getting data it can be an inbound data 
the data that can be generated by your company's own app in which you have the user details of uh, the customers or you can have third party data that you have purchased from any other company to get more emails more data sets more customers to target to right so this is the type of things that we can deal with now uh, let's try to take an example of where things go around now i'll give you just an example of what happened during the covid time so vaccinations were rolled out so there were certain sections of society that misused the type of data that was being generated or the generation from the customers from the people's perspective was wrong so what happened in some of the remote villages most of the vaccines that happened were to genuine people but some elements in the society they so pe some people registered their vac vaccinations in the name of some celebrities so which is a very wrong thing to do which can lead the uh, majority of data that is coming in because the input that is being provided by the user is wrong in its first place so if you analyze the rest of the data the entire data set would go wrong so which is why it import it is important to know what type of quality you are you're dealing with for every hundred rupees that is being spent by the by the company on marketing efforts only five percent or let's say only ten percent is efficiently utilized for running those processes what does that mean that means that the majority 80 percent or 90 percent is being lost by because of the quality of the data that is being uh, that is coming in so second point that we are talking about is lack of data analysts so data analyst is fairly new thing that has come up in the past five years with the rise of internet so now analyzing this type of data more and more users are connected to to the internet even in india around 59 percent of users have uh, mobile internet running so with more and more people using internet the quantity of data that is coming up is also massive which is why it, it is important for us as a society to have more data analysts to utilize that type of data into using it into to make some meaningful results for the company using meaningful decisions for the company next is correlating data now if you have a data set and you are in a in a domain in a department or in in a particular section that is very competitive with the with using data for example food delivery apps or some apps so they have massive amounts of data so they need to make sure you have certain relationship with the data that is coming up from the other company or other department to make sure that you are going on the right track that is correlating data then comes data quantity so data quantity with massive amounts of data you it's hard to keep track where that data is coming from is it more useful is it less useful so all that stuff so let me tell you about the various phases in which data is processed right so the first phase is called data cleaning so when the data comes in it is first clean what does this mean this means that when a business or a business entity it sets up a problem statement that's the first task that's the step number one that a company takes so they perform an initial analysis of that problem statement that's step number two then this third step that they do is they fix any misspellings or any typos that have been come up in that data set right this is done by conditional formatting data validation all that processes in excel then you have to remove the duplicates that are there in that problem sheet you may have some users that are registered twice some of them have their have certain relationship which match which certains that this is a repeated data set so you need to remove all the duplicates that have been generated in that particular data set then comes checking for bias is there any bias involved in that in that data set is it pointing out towards are the questions or the problem statements that have been set up for the users to fill in are they biased for example if you are a food delivery company you cannot ask the question like how good was the food because good is a bias in it it already has a favoring towards something better right it does not involve the question the, and also the question should be very quantitative in nature for example rate the food from 1 to 10 that is more quantitative with 7 being good 8 being better 9 being best or something of that sort so 10 being exceptional so all that stuff has to be taken care of because you need to make data as quantitative as possible you cannot have qualitative data in which the user or the the person who is analyzing the data has to judge what 
the person would have thought so this does not work in the analytics world it has to be very quantitative in nature the second part is analyzing that particular data which means understanding the problem statement thoroughly adjusting and formatting data in which it is useful for your particular objective right you need to exclude all the things in that data that is not needed for that particular project then is finding the appropriate relationship between the data sets does it make sense to have both data sets running parallelly together does it conclude something is it solving that particular problem so all that things you have to take care in data analysis then comes the visualization of data now most of the board of directors if you're coming in management of the firm they don't have time to look at raw data manually right they would want certain figures certain visualizations to make the data more appealing more clearly understandable so the main objective of data is to make better decisions for the company make better marketing decisions for the company so in order to do so the management needs to know what trends are going on right so they need to visualize data through pie charts through tree maps through various bar charts or histograms so they need to visualize that particular data they do they won't have time to see numbers right numbers can be confusing and misleading so you need to make graphs make plots and then you know showcase to the management of the company so that they could understand what is really going on with that particular data set or that particular project that you're working on so this all these things are a big challenge to their marketing analytics companies are a big big headache for companies how do they do all that stuff so they have particular department the business analyst department the data scientist department so all these data related activities are held there so the problem statements are sent up by the management and data that particular department works on these particular data sets and make many meaningful results out of it so this was the challenges that are faced in the marketing analytics world in this module let's try to understand the various models that are important to be known when it comes to marketing analytics let's look at the first model which is called marketing mix model now this model tells us basically about what is the return on investment that we will be getting from that particular marketing effort that we did so in layman terms what is the use of this particular model so this particular model helps us measuring the return on investments helps optimize the future performance of that particular marketing effort then manage our marketing budgets how much budget is required for particular activity also learn about the sales pattern and the sales drivers that are driving the sales in that particular marketing effort so all these things are included in this particular model so since this model has to look at various assumptions and various variables are included in it like customer behavior like competitor analysis and all that stuff so for doing such thing it requires a lot of time so this particular model requires at least two years of two to three years of historical data that needs to be present at that time so this particular model is is called a bottoms up approach what does that means that means that it will first measure the sales drivers that is driving the particular marketing effort it will look at the return on investment that has been got then it then further it will forecast what is what is the response to various various marketing campaigns then at the end it will also optimize your media marketing budget it will optimize the way things are looking forward for the company for example if a company is putting their money in different channels for example let's say social media marketing let's say they are marketing on facebook then they are marketing on search engine channels like google or bing then they are using commercial tv ads right so considering all that approach they have spent some amount of money in different channels now they need to understand they would analyze through data that which is the best suitable thing that is working for their company is it the social media campaign is it the search engine campaigns is it the commercial tv campaigns which is gathering more traction to the product that they are selling so the main objective of this is to make sure your budget is optimized it is spent in an efficient way and not in a way in which the company is losing out on money so this is the most important type of model that we learn in the marketing analytics the next type of model that we will be learning about is called the multi-touch attribution model now this model 
takes care of the personal level user data that has been generated by the potential customers in their entire journey of being a potential customer to being an actual customer. So this multi-touch attribution is a marketing measuring technique that assesses the impact of each touch point, right? That's why the name multi-touch, it assesses the impact of each touch point in driving a conversion, in generating the leads and to give due credit to that, to that touch point. So how does this work? So First, before coming on to the multi-touch attribution, let me explain you what is a single touch attribution model. Let me give you a basic example of a customer, right? So what would happen is that let's take an entire journey of a customer, right? So first, let's say Ram is buying a particular product or he's buying a particular online course. So for that, he he sees an ad on Google, on random Google search, he sees an ad. So he clicks on that ads on Google. Okay. So he clicks on that ad. That's his first touch point. This is how that particular user came to know about that particular offering, particular course that has been offered. Then he finds that particular ad in, let's say, Instagram. Instagram then he finds that ad on Facebook and he clicks on that ad then after that he finds that a he fills a particular sort of form to know about what more the course then he receives a cold email which also tells us about tells him about the particular ad the particular course that has been generated so he clicks that email as well right then he gets to note that there is an app of that particular company. Then he downloads that app. And then he buys a particular. Buys that particular course. So this is the journey. This is the customer's journey, right? The journey. So what would happen in that case? When we talk about single touch attribution model. So in that particular model, the due credit, the due driver of the key performance indicator for that campaign or for that thing would be considered either the first touch point, this is the first touch point, or the last touch point. Right? So, this particular journey would have been very uneven. So, in single touch attribution model, it is unjustified it is not good to leave out the middle indicators right middle touch point middle middle data collection points now in multi-touch attribution models it gives due credit to whichever the thing has been done so either it can be time decay attribution model in which the last touch point is given the maximum credit then you have a significant drop like this so the first the last point gets more credit the second point gets the last point gets low credit the first point gets the highest credit or you can have a u-shape model uh, attribution model in which the first and the last gets equal credit then in between it is little less than what the the initial ones and the last ones are there so this is called a u type attribution model so the basic structure or the basic way of determining what a particular effort marketing effort is generating how the leads are generating it is done through this particular model now the important thing is to choose the right channels to market your particular goods or service that you are selling out so this particular model would not work in traditional type of marketing methods as we learned earlier that it would work it would not work in tv commercials or pamphlets or in a newspapers because you cannot track the customer this would only work in new digital marketing channels like uh, google bing facebook instagram twitter all these digital things that can be tracked right so you need to make sure that uh, generally what used to happen is that first it was it was established a fact in marketing that one particular user will have one device in which he'll use different things to generate more content generate more types of lead for the company but now since there are a, uh, various devices that have come in so it becomes important to have good third-party 
you know partners so that they could give you right data points and data collection structure so that you can measure your marketing efforts performance optimize it accordingly and use it in the way that is most efficient to drive sales so the next module that we will be talking about is called brand value now let's get this correct it is not brand values like the core values of a company this is brand value now what does this mean this means that if you were to sell your brand the value that would be generated after selling that is the money that you would be receiving is called the brand value now your brand value is the total amount you would be paid if you merged with something or you <clears throat> want to utilize someone wants to utilize your name your logo your identity as a brand to sell their products and services now let's imagine that you are buying clothes now you can buy clothes from an unbranded thing or a branded thing like louis vuitton or major brands right that costs in lakhs now as a customer what are you paying for you are paying for the quality of the product you are paying for the operations the money spent in the operations to make that particular product then you are also paying for the brand identity you are paying for the brand image as a whole so all these three things combined together is the mrp that you see on the tag right so this is the exact thing that we are trying to understand what is this brand value now you have certain parameters to calculate what a brand value is now if i tell you what is the brand value of apple it's probably in billions right now in order to calculate let's just take an example of a particular product that we will be buying like let's say i'll i want to buy a sweatshirt now if i uh, buy a sweatshirt let me just give you a brief example of how it is done now if you're buying a sweatshirt of let's say 2500 right this is the branded from a big brand brand then you subtract the same piece of cloth that is unbranded the price of the same clothes that is unbranded let's say it is let's say 1500 all right so if you subtract the two what do you get you get 1000 now this is the amount that you are paying for the brand identity this is the amount that you are paying for the brand identity now in order to calculate as the whole approach there are two approach one is called the market approach the second is called the income approach now market approach in calculating the brand value stands for basically comparing the two different com two similar companies that ha that are involved in the same sector for example you would compare louis vuitton to gucci or something like that now the main concern in this particular approach the market approach is that they may have different revenue lines of stream right they would have different revenue revenue streams that have been running through now you cannot match the exact same thing with the other right they may have different product they may have different ways of you know expanding their business throughout the world so this approach is not very appropriate to take place the second approach is called the income approach that we are talking about here so in that approach we basically look at what the branded would cost and what the unbranded would cost then would subtract it now as a whole if we need to calculate how would we be calculated we would calculate it is by the number of items sold in a particular year into the price of that particular item that is branded branded then we would subtract the number of items sold into the price of unbranded result the net we would get would be the present value the value of the brand we could multiply it with the discount factor will get a certain value that is called the brand value next we'll be trying to understand how do you enhance your brand value now brand value had a lot of different you can run marketing campaigns like uh, if you would have heard about the cred campaign of rahul dravid how a, a very you know a person who does not get anger and suddenly he is portrayed as a angry young man so that shift that <clears throat> celebrity that is doing such thing the campaigns that have been run through that grab the people's eye the grab the attention of the customer so 
all these things have to be taken care of when we talk about enhancing your brand value second is brand ambassadors the more familiar the face is for example oneplus oneplus was not very popular in india right initially it was not popular in india but when the company hired robert downey jr which is also portrayed as iron man which is very very common commonly known actor in in indian household because a lot of children will see uh, avenger movies a lot of people a lot of youngsters look at the marvel studios so the creating a brand getting a brand ambassador that is known to all is a must so same with one one plus one plus also enhanced its market share in india through uh, getting robert downey jr as a brand ambassador so getting a good band brand ambassador is also very important third is the customer user experience now the user the customer has to feel that it owns the brand it has to feel connected to the brand so that is why user experience plays an essential role you would have seen like in malls if you go you have a very stunning trial rooms you would have good mirrors the lighting would be really good on those mirrors so these all things play a very crucial role in enhancing the brand value then after all these things are done then comes loyalty the people the people should feel loyal to the brand that they own so this is very important these are the things that enhance the brand value of a particular company or a business entity all right the next topic that we are to going to talk about is called the customer lifetime value now what does this mean this means that the lifetime value of a customer is the customer's entire value to a company over the course of time so for example if you're buying from any e-commerce site or some things online that particular company would have something called as loyalty points they want the customers to be loyal to them they want the customers to revisit their website and buy stuff from them the more they buy the more happier the company is right so from a brand's perspective from a business entity's perspective what is the value that a customer holds for them that is individual customer how much valuable a customer is to their brand this is basically customer lifetime value it has certain calculations we'll talk about it soon then <clears throat> the next point that i'm trying to tell you is that it is a crucial measure since it's keep existing customers cost less than the actual new ones so if you would have known that if you're buying something let's say for zomato you would have different discounts for a customer who is more loyal to you for a customer who keeps coming and buying stuff from your website from your app will have more discounts as a customer because you value that particular customer to come back again and again you want to give them their retention cost so that the customer you give them discount so that the customer keeps coming back to you right thus it boosts the value of the existing customer to generate the growth that is required for the company now if i'm trying to tell you that okay if one particular customer is loyal to me now with human tendency he'll tell two other friends that you know what look at this particular app it's it is phenomenal i buy it from it every day so the word would spread even faster right so they want the customers who are loyal to them who does just does not go away after one transaction to give more and more discounts to such customers so this is what the loop that brings in in a customer's lifetime value let's see what are the things that are involved in calculating clv so CLV, CLV would be equal to the net margin, the net margin per customer minus the retention cost, cost that would be incurred multiplied by. Now this is the thing. Look closely. This is one plus D. D is the discount factor divided by. 1 plus d minus r r is the retention rate we'll not get too much into what it is now this particular this first term is called as short term margin and this here is called the long term margin now let's just think about it this way let's take an example let's take an example of zomato so if the zomato it's basic calculation if zomato 
has an average margin of let's say 100 rupees per customer and its average retention cost its average cost in marketing to that customer giving them certain discounts giving them certain beneficiaries so certain retention but the effort that is being put in by the company the cost that has been incurred let's say it is 20 the customer has to be retained for let's say 20 years so the CLV would be 80 into 20 1600 so that's what the CLV is all about now let's talk about the jobs that are there in marketing analytics now this domain has been fairly big uh, growing big in the recent time so the opportunities that have opened up in this particular domain are immense so when I talk about marketing analytics the jobs that are related to it then the most important and the core job title that you would be hearing about is the marketing leads the analytical marketing leads so these are the, this is the most important and the common type of job profile that you will be encountering if you're just starting out as uh, as a marketing analytics person so what are the key responsibilities that are there in this particular job so you need to understand how the b2c the business to consumer the ecosystem works and also the business to business ecosystem works so consisting of both the scenarios you would have uh, you need to have a fairly good amount of knowledge about how businesses operate since you are in an analytics job that too in marketing so you would have to deal with lots and lots of amount of data to address all that issues all that massive amounts of data you would need certain softwares that help you with the decision making to formulate models with this data so that type of softwares would be excel number one then you have sql you have uh, programming with R then you have tableau for data visualization and power bi so these are the major set of softwares or major set of you know the things that you need to learn when you get into marketing analytics since we have already mentioned in the models before the attribution models that you need to know about a lot of different types of way, ways in which you can enhance the productivity of the efficiency of the company so in order to do that you need to have a lot of knowledge about handling the data i'm not saying that you need to be a coder need to have good language skills good programming language skills no that is not the case you can have a beginner's knowledge about python or r but most in the most little sense you do not need any particularly programming language but what you really need is a very good hands-on experience with excel a good hands-on experience with sql and a good hands-on experience with data visualization tools that i already mentioned like tableau and sql now in order for you to learn all these skills you do not have to go anywhere and search around the internet we here at great learning academy have this particular courses in line in sync you can just go to the website of great learning academy and then you can search their respective course that you want to do and you can get the certificate as well so <clears throat> coming on to what uh, what are the key responsibility areas for the jobs related to marketing analytics so it can be about data integration data acquisition return on investments as we already mentioned that we will be dealing with lot of rois that is how much the marketing campaign is gaining momentum how much money is spent how much budget is allocated to that particular campaign so all that stuff have to be taken care of by you by marketing analytics people the people who are involved in either product analytics either you know maintenance analytics about how the smooth line function is happening and also the analytics lead who take care of everything in the upper hand so uh, customer engagement so since you are related to a field in which you have direct interactions with the consumer behavior you need to understand what they are going through so you need to make sure the your kpis that would be enhancing the customer engagement you should know how you can you know gather more momentum if it if it is a social media site if it is a their website in which they want to gain momentum you need to make sure that that is happening through the models through the uh, the, the aggregation models that we discussed you need to make sure that everything goes smooth and in line with 
the company's vision. So this was all about marketing analytics jobs. All right, now it's time to know what we have learned so far in this course. So we learned about what exactly is marketing analytics. We further discuss about the various challenges that are faced in the marketing analytics in today's world. We also got to know about the various marketing analytics models that we discussed, the aggregation models. We further discuss about the brand value and how do we calculate the brand value. Then we learned about the customer lifetime value and also how to calculate the customer lifetime value, the model that is required in that as well. Then finally, we discussed about the job opportunities in this particular domain called marketing analytics. What are the other skills that are required to learn about this particular course that is marketing analytics, that job profile. So the softwares that are required is Microsoft Excel, SQL and uh, Tableau and Power BI, all that you can find in our website of Great Learning Academy. So with that said, I would end this particular course, but I hope you had a very good learning experience from this particular course. For more such courses, stay tuned to Great Learning. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new update or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing. So make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video for any query or suggestions and I will respond to your comments.